If you're familiar with the Mars Climate Orbiter, you understand why units are so important in engineering and how easy they are to screw up. And one of the strengths of PTC MathCAD is that it comes with units built in, it understands units, and can reconcile them. Let's take a look at an example. Let's start creating a variable called distance. I'm going to have this be equal to an eighth of a mile. And to use a mile, you just multiply and then type in the name of the unit. And I happen to know that for a mile, it's MI. And I'll click the plus sign. And let's add in, say, a thousand meters, which is M. And then add in a mix of another unit. Let's say that we're going to add in 3,000 inches. And then add in one other factor. Let's make it 678. And for this one, let's say I don't know the name of the unit that I want to use. I can go to the units drop down menu and find the one that I want. And if I go to length, there are a whole bunch of different length units in here. For example, you can see, can see angstroms, they have feet, inch fractions, you can do kilometers, nanometers smoots for people who went to MIT, a whole bunch of other different units in here. And what's really nice is if you try to mix the wrong kind of units, it'll give you an error. So let's say that I want to add to these distances. I want to use a unit of days. And then let's click the equal sign to evaluate. It says, hey, wait a second. These units are not compatible. It's saying that, you know, you can't add in length and time unit. So let's delete that. And Again, we'll go to our units drop down menu. Let's scroll up to length again. And for this one, let's say that we are going to use yards. And then when I click outside, it evaluates and tells me this is about 1.9 times 10 to the 3 meters. This is a good time to take a look at our math formatting. And so right now it is using general math notation. If I go to this drop down menu, I can say that I want to use decimal instead, or in this case, engineering multiples of 10 times 10 to the 3 uh, would be the same. But you can control both how it's being reported and also we can specify the number of decimal places. Maybe I want it out to four decimal places. So there we see the result where it's taken all these different units and reconciled them to meters. That's because if I go to the math tab, my unit system is SI. And I can choose from three different default units. The other is the US customary system. And I change that. Now it's reporting the value to me in feet. And this is going to come up again when we integrate a creole parametric model with PTC MathCAD because most time uh, in Creole Parametric, if you're using English units, you tend to use inches instead of feet. So we'll talk about how to deal with that later. And the third system that also comes with PTC MathCAD is centimeter gram seconds. So I click out of here and there we can see the, the value reported in centimeters. But let's go back to SI, click outside. Again, we have our value reported in meters. Also, PTC MathCAD can automatically reduce the units. Let's do an electrical problem. Let's define our current as being equal to, let's do 167.5. And for current, we can use amperes. And if I'm not sure what that abbreviation is, again, I can go up in here, hover my mouse over. Okay, it's just the letter A. That's great. Now let's define our resistance, and I'll choose R, and that's going to be equal to 283.4, and I'm going to use ohms, and I happen to know that ohm is the Greek letter W, actually it's capital Greek letter W, so I can actually do shift W, and then hit control G, and it automatically converts it to the Greek letter omega and recognizes that that is ohms. Let's then define voltage is going to be equal to I times R. And we'll use inline evaluation. And it knew that when I was multiplying amperes times ohms, that automatically converts into volts. 
And if I want to report in base units, I'll just click that number. And there it takes that volts out and it's giving me the kilogram meter squared per second to the third times amperes. But again, that's not intuitive. Let's turn base units back off. And now we are in volts. You can also create your own custom set of units. And what I recommend that you do in order to define your own set of units, first you want to go to the math formatting tab and use this drop down list to say that, hey, I'm not creating a variable to begin with. I'm going to create a unit. And let's use FPF. And I'm actually going to do it. looks like it's still reporting as a variable. If you use Control Q, that'll also toggle the label from the default to being a unit. So I'm going to define my unit as being equal to a fur, fur, furlong per fortnight. A uh, very common physics problem that people do to understand converting units. And rather than using the regular definition operator, I'm going to go to the math tab and the operators and use the global definition. Whenever I'm defining my own custom set of units, so in order to be able to use it anywhere within the worksheet, I like to use the global definition, which is that equal sign with three lines instead of the usual two lines. And again, this is going to be a furlong per fortnight. And that's my new set of units. So now let's define some kind of velocity. Okay, so let's say that I am driving my car at 60 miles an hour. Hey, let's uh, use a variable V1. That's going to be equal to 60 times mile divided by hour. And again, if I evaluate, that turns out to be 26.82 meters per second. Well, let's figure out what that equates to in our unit of furlongs per fortnight. I'm just going to hover over that. Uh, I hit the delete key or the backspace key and it highlighted the existing units in red. And I type in my custom set of units, which you might notice appears in a blue color like my other units, and then click outside. And that tells me that this is, again, we can go to the math formatting tab. And let's change this from general math. Let's use decimals or use our engineering notation. Uh, it's basically 161.28 thousand furlongs per fortnight. And one last thing to mention about your units, and I showed this in another video, be aware that angles are done in radians by default. So for example, if I do sine of 45 and hit the equal sign, that's equal to 0 0.85, but that doesn't feel right to me. Hey, let's click inside of here and multiply by, and again, if you're not sure how to write radians in MathCAD, we can go to our angle and choose degrees, and then click outside, and yep, that's equal to 0 0.71. Again, we can go to math formatting, and if we want to go this out to more decimal places, 0 0.7071, which is like the, oh yeah, square root of one half or something like that. Before we go, I just wanted to mention all the different kinds of units that you have available to you. So for example, you've got acceleration in G's, angles like we used, a bunch of electrical ones. We even have radiation doses. You've got energy, force, frequency, uh, magnetic stuff, mass, power, resistance, temperature, time, velocity. So again, you have a ton of units, all the different kinds of units that you would want to use for doing engineering work. So anyhow, I uh, hope that you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. And as always, remember that PTC MathCAD Express is available as a free download from the PTC website.